Dan Washburn is music director of the Michigan Philharmonic. Tell us about what you've been saying with your colleagues in the orchestra and maybe other presenters and leaders of other organizations throughout Michigan and, and in your contacts. Well, it's been interesting because I think, you know, the first two weeks, everybody's just in shock. And then as we learn more, uh, first it was just, we're gonna have to cancel things this season and, and postpone some things, and then we'll be back to regular. You know, and I think with uh, weekly news reports and daily news reports, things are changing. So we're talking, we're on lists and, and conversing and having webinars and, and many Zoom sessions with um, other arts groups and trying to figure out the best plan. Everybody's talking about similar kinds of things. Streaming, obviously, is something that everybody wants to do. Our board is also feeling like it's an opportunity for us to really shake some things up. We, we always been kind of a little bit different than other orchestras, but I think this is an opportunity for us to change some things up even more. Um, I certainly uh, wanna get back to being able to have very large uh, concerts with big audiences. I think that's probably gonna be a little bit before we can get to that. I think conversing with other orchestras, we've also had to be talking with our youth orchestra conductors and uh, other youth orchestra conductors, because all of a sudden we had to stop our weekly rehearsals. And um, thankfully, Hector Cattetti, um and, and Dennis Carter, our uh, youth orchestra conductors, have been great doing Zoom sessions, which basically are like almost online uh, uh, individual lessons almost. And uh, I think you know, as we move forward, we're looking at still investigating maybe the possibility of doing something outdoors this summer, if we can spread out. We're looking at, at bringing in some small ensembles um, to play, just to be visible in, in uh, uh, downtown Plymouth, maybe Northville, uh, making sure that everybody knows that we haven't gone away. Um, next year is actually our 75th anniversary season, and um, we're going to probably have to pull, not do everything we wanted to do, um, but we want to make sure everybody is thinking about us and that we will be back and uh, doing as much as we can this year. Um, I think we're also probably going to be focusing on maybe some smaller ensembles that we already do. Obviously, we, we do our uh, January concert is historically our miniature masterpieces. Um, that is something that we do with maybe 15 players or less. And uh, so I think we're actually in a good position because we've always been a flexible size orchestra that we have, uh, we do full orchestra concerts, but we do actually quite a few on the smaller side as well. So we're, we're gonna hopefully capitalize on some of that flexibility in the months to come. I've been enjoying some of the performances, everything from maybe the four most famous notes in classical music uh, from one of your Beethoven concerts to maybe the most famous music by the one of my favorite um, 20th century composers, Arturo Marquez. Wonderful composer. And uh, we, we love that piece so much. I mean, it's a very popular piece, uh, the Danson number two, um, but he's written some other pieces that we really hope to do soon as well. But it's a it's very sultry and just uh, wonderful rhythms, and uh, I, I just love it. It really was Beth uh, Stewart, our executive director, who thought, let's let's start using all our archi wonderful archival video. And so we've been sending them out. Uh, Beth has sent out a couple like, each week at least. So it's uh, fun to kind of re relive some of those great performances and, and know that that's a way that we can uh, be connect with our, our supporters. I also saw an Andrew Lloyd Webber performance from Phantom. I think it might have been from a Halloween concert because it I looked like you, you, may be, you may have been doing your best Amelia Earhart uh, impersonation. That, that was that was the plan. And what I didn't realize in, in doing that um, particular costume, which I was very excited about, um, was that once you put the little flaps of the helmet on, you can't hear as well. But uh, actually in that clip, um, uh, the percussionists with the brand new Tam Tam are demonstrating, yes, in fact, you can hear this giant Tam Tam. And the more I smiled at them, the more they hit it bigger and bigger and bigger. Halloween 
doing concerts are, are one of our, our most favorite things. I also enjoyed hearing the very end of one of my favorite Dvorak symphonies. You know, you hear the New World all the time because it's great, and the Eighth Symphony as well, but uh, you shared a performance of the Seventh, and I listened to the last movement, which really did give me goosebumps. Oh, thank you. I'm so thrilled, because it is one of my favorite symphonies ever. And I performed it, I think, in college, maybe the first time as a flutist. And uh, I, w when we started rehearsing it, because it's not done as often, a lot of our musicians um, didn't know it as well. And they kept thinking, wow, oh, yeah. why aren't we doing the ninth? Why aren't we doing the eighth? And I said, this is a fabulous symphony, but it's, it's in some ways harder, I think. Uh, the rhythms, especially in some of the other movements, are very tricky. And, you know, but at the end, the musician said, I think this is my new favorite Dvorak symphony. Thanks, Nan, for all that you've shared with us from your archive and for telling us about what's ahead. Thank you. We really appreciate it.